So hey there and welcome back to the channel. You see this week's theme was supposed to unravel quite differently. I intended to present a whole bunch of Siemens phones in a sub-series spanning several clips, but it turns out that most of the phones are not quite in the best of shapes, like this one here, or this one. So instead, I'll just do a mashup and present a whole bunch of significant German designed and made mobile phones. I am, of course, speaking about the Business Class S series, which gave Nokia's 6 series phones a run for their money. Well, either that or maybe Siemens was just the more affordable alternative to the establishment. But seeing as I have always been rooting for the underdog, it should come as no surprise that I hold these phones dear. So let us start with the obvious and well-preserved one, the S55. It's a small marvel of a phone. It came out amidst the full-fledged mobile phone revolution, polyphonic sounds, color screens, cameras and the like. Ah yes, I know what you're thinking. This phone doesn't actually have a camera. Well, yes and no. It can hold an add-on camera, sort of an afterthought. A separate digital unit can be connected here through the proprietary cable slot and take VGA pictures. I have seen Ericsson do the same trick with their contemporary T68 model. Yeah, sure, the pics were VGA 640 by 480 and you didn't actually have any storage capabilities. Well, not significant ones anyway. But hey, a camera is a camera after all. It's quite strange looking at this device. I can't really explain why, but for some reason I might consider this phone to be the epitome of mobile functionality and ergonomics. I might even go out on a limb here, but I will declare this little Siemens the best looking feature phone, period. You know what I'm referring to, the typical cell phone golden era, between the 2000s and the 2010s when touchscreens was not really a when touchscreen wasn't really a thing and smartphones actually meant something quite different altogether i just hope i get to do an episode on that one but i'll have to really prepare for such a feat i find my revelation quite the more contradictory since I hadn't actually owned or used this phone back when it was new. Or maybe it's just a don't meet your hero kind of situation. I mean, you could dream about a Lamborghini Countach all day long as a child, have a poster of it, have a poster of it over the bed when growing up and still consider it the best supercar ever, mainly because you haven't actually driven the damn thing. But I digress. So this little bean-shaped phone, it's quite elegant and purposeful in its design. It fits snugly into your hand and the key design is absolute delight. Build quality is average, but the plastics are okay, I guess, for the period anyway. Nothing too impressive um, among today's glass slabbed monolith smartphones which look like props from a Space Odyssey movie. Battery size is simply hilarious in this day and age. It's a 700 milliamp hour unit. I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me just try to get it closer to the camera so you can check out the capacity. There we go. Let me just pop it in, the phone. By the way, this particular S55, it's in quite the nice condition. I don't know if it's, uh, it's been tampered with or not. The screws somewhat look used, but it is fairly well put together. It doesn't rattle, creak or anything. 
the battery is not swollen and this little hinge is not broken off so it's had quite the good life <laughs> unlike the other one I own which is rather well it's all over the place but I'll get back to this one in a minute funny enough Siemens always had issues with their batteries whether we are speaking about low quality units that didn't hold power quite so efficiently or just plain housing design errors which made them move around the cell phone and subsequently lose contact with the pins rendering the phone unusable screen is simply hilarious let's just turn this thing on <laughs> so yeah low, uh, low resolution zero sunlight readability low refresh rates and if I had to say it Welcome kids to the non-touchscreen display. You see, us older folks used an ingenious doohickey to control the image on this display. It was a complex system of mechanically interactive movable plastic tiles which were called buttons. Yeah, that was odd. But Tons. But anyway, enough lame jokes. This is the S55, so let's get it going. I am missing the cable charger, but luckily I have sourced something very useful. This universal battery charger. And I... so... So this thing is really important as I am able to test several older phones, which I own without having the hassle of buying proprietary cables for each of them. So yeah, this is the S55. It's a rather interesting looking piece of old tech. I very much appreciate it. This is my other one, which is has seen better days. I don't know why I keep this one, because it doesn't even have the serial left on it. The earpiece bezel here has fallen off. It's very scratched. It doesn't really turn on, but I suspect that's because it is missing some screws. And, <laughs> well, this actually this was my attempt at building an S55 from spare parts because if you have a look here I have all sorts of things left there's uh, let me just pour them on here <laughs> yeah that's funny so I have one bezel missing the one so I have one front bezel missing the um, screen protector thing, screen glass, one back plate, which housing, which can be used. This is in actual good condition. One battery cover. A few batteries, which I suspect are still working. This one isn't because it's a bit swollen, but these two seem okay. <laughs> There's pieces of buttons. Uh, keyboard um, circuit and this LCD screen which I suspect is not working so yeah now, these are all spare parts which I have gathered in an attempt to rebuild this S55 but luckily I have sourced an OK one um, some while back and I shall not be needing this anymore but let's get on with it because there's still a bunch of phones to cover now this is the S65 or rather the SP65 this is quite the interesting phone because um, the S65 featured a 1.3 megapixel integrated camera. This one, however, is it was meant to be used by business folks or I don't know, it was supposed to prevent uh, industrial espionage and it lacks a camera. Pretty interesting feature. 
just like the Nokia E60. It was considered to be very professional grade to be missing a camera purposefully or intentionally. This actually has been my daily driver for about three years. Well, not this particular unit, but one similar to this. I was smitten by its no frills minimalist design, very similar in philosophy to the S55, but rather striking with its angular rigid shape, contrasting this fluid uh, full of emotion bio design theme going on with the S55. I love the buttons to screen ratio and I love this blackened out bezel because it seems like the screen is actually bigger than it is. Um, the the grey black theme is also, I don't know, I wouldn't call it exciting but it's rather elegant, don't you think? Um, there was even a Golf GTI version, honest engine there was. <laughs> but even though this was a capable phone, it had a mini SD slot, Bluetooth, infrared and some other bells and whistles. Still, it felt, still, it fell rather short in comparison to the Nokia 6100, should we say. I don't know which was the exact competitor to this phone, from Nokia I mean, but it, I, maybe the 6230, maybe the 6230i, and even if this had on paper more specs or better specs, uh, yeah, the build quality suffered some, um, and it, it wasn't premium feel, premium grade, anyway. The build quality, I would consider it impressive. The front bezel is metallic, even if not metal per se, I believe it's some sort of plated plastic. Um, but the back and sides are, well, very cheap. Also, for some reason, this unit has decided to forego screw tightening. So if you can see here, I'll get closer to the camera. Yeah, the, the, the screws are moving, I don't know why. I shall try to use my trusty small repair kit to try to tighten them, see if I can salvage this thing. I cannot for the life of me understand why this happened since it seems that this unit is in a pristine condition, unused, maybe a bit used, unaltered, not a lot of scuffs, no, no red flags that this was an open unit. But hey, what do I know? I don't even have the battery to show you how it works. So see what I mean about being the... So you can see what I mean about not being able to feature individual clips for each of these phones. The next one, however, is not pristine. <laughs> it's a well-worn example of a golden era pre-polyphonic GSM Z mods. It should have been the creme de la creme version, but I cannot understand what that meant. The Siemens S45 he featured here is quite similar to the M45, the C45 and the ME45. The mid, the accessible and the sort of rugged variant, I don't know. They're so similar in fact that I suspect that they're just the simple case of plain, plain old badge engineering here. Anyway, I have left this one quite dirty because I wanted to explain to you how I clean these things if they have some serious marks like labels or stuff like this. You need a piece of cotton, um, some isopropyl alcohol or IPA and a damp cloth to clean it up afterwards. Just be careful with the uh, IPA solution because it does dissolve paint. 
so just a smudge and um, don't be too uh, generous with applying it just swiftly clean it you see it already took out the paper um, the paper residue and quickly clean with a damp cloth because you want to protect the paint as much as possible these are plastic phones and they do dissolve quite rapidly so let's try removing this label as well you see it's coming off but rather leaving a rather nasty residue on the plastic so quickly just take the IPA yeah you can see it cleans up extremely well I don't know if this was helpful or not it's just my way of showing you how I clean up these uh, oh, relics of the past so quickly the damp cloth is not damp that's damp I don't know if my pronunciation is quite on par but you know what I mean so here it is the S45 unfortunately I can't really show you how it works because even though I own a battery doesn't seem to want to charge is fairly swollen so yeah there we have it is just another honor honorable mention anyway I was actually a huge SL45 fan I got, got one quite early on but this Siemens SL40 but this Siemens I got one quite early on but this for S45 sorry to say I have no experience with so yeah let me just open it up and show you its insides I don't know if you can see this yeah the writing is on the wall as they say I believe by the time this one came in Siemens was clearly third or fourth place in term of in terms of a mobile phone market value or um, I don't know hip value or stuff like that so let's just say they weren't the Apple they weren't the um, uh, Apple or Tesla of their day so I just have one more feature to show you this is the S68 the BenQ Siemens actually which uh, by the time this was launched uh, BenQ had already taken over the Siemens mobile phone division it's an interesting looking device it was meant to be business all the way it's got an excellent design it's uh, it can carries on the theme of the s65 it's not quite as feature packed as the s65 I don't know what the analogy would be here think of this one as the 6100 Nokia next to this being the 6230i Nokia so this one this one is the feature packed one this is the very well built but light version business phone I don't know if that makes sense my explanation but sort of is how things went back then the built construction again is very well it catches your eye it's sturdy it's nice and tight no gaps no squeaks no squeaks no creaks but only the front is metal or metallic uh, like I don't know for sure if it's metal or not but speaking of premium feel this actually had a Bugatti version which would be interesting to catch they're not these Zima's uh, special versions they're not that impressive but they do offer some sort of hardware um, pizzazz of sorts so yeah the battery cover is featured on overall the length of the phone let me just try to pry it open yeah uh, you see quite a slim and elegant design quite nifty interesting 
a lot of things going on here. For this one, I have a working battery. It is a 660 milliamp hour capacity. That's downright hilarious. This one actually charges, even though the battery seems to have developed a bit of a swollen issue. But the SIM card tray is not working, so yeah. Again, I don't know, if, is this a memorabilia piece or just a bunch of old tech that needs to be junked? I'll have to decide on that one. I got it on the cheap side, it was about 10 euros or so, I got it as a collection item. It's in quite good condition, Aesthetic, aesthetically speaking. It has a few marks and dings here and there, but nothing too uh, worrisome. Uh, the screen also, the screen glass is pretty scratch, scuffed, but hey, no Gorilla Glass here, as you might expect. So let's just try to turn it on. I don't know if why it doesn't want to turn on because it did a couple of days ago maybe the battery has just drained again so these are my Siemens phones no, not all of them are working not all of them are that impressive I don't know tell me what you think of them I might be tempted to give some away as soon as my channel starts growing in fact I do uh, carry on my pledge, encourage my ramblings and rants, help the channel grow and I'll make sure to give most of these things away. Honestly, I'm just tempted to keep these two. I know these are not in the best shape, so sorry about that. Don't consider them giveaways. I just want to, maybe someone who is passionate about these things can, I don't know, open them up, uh, use them as spare parts, what have you. I don't, I don't consider them pristine phones, so that's not what this channel is about. It's just an incursion in the weird, uh, wacky world of uh, old tech. So anything that's shiny, metal-like, well-built, with a premium feel, uh, I sh I most certainly will have it. Um, well, I don't know if that made any sense. Thanks for watching anyway, and I shall be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.